Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, today we're going to start looking at uh, a little bit more practical uses of Emacs now that we've uh, done all the uh, the background stuff. Um, I do want to say thanks for the comments. Uh, keep them coming, leave them on the blog, leave them um, on the video, leave them on Reddit. Uh, if you have a suggestion um, for people who are seeing this video to do things a little bit differently or another alternative, uh, please leave that comment. That would be great on the blog because that way, um, you know, when my students and other people learning Emacs take a look, they'll hear what I have to recommend. But if you have a much cooler way of doing it, then they can see that right in the comments and then they can, you know, learn more. Um, I also want to say that um, thanks for the recommendation of trying to use um, the OBS, the Open Broadcast software um, or system. I'm going to give that a shot for this video, see how it goes. And those of you that were complaining about the clicky keys, I apologize for that. That's just the keyboard I have and the equipment I have. Um, I'm going to try to play around, see if I can make that a little bit better, but you know, just doing the best I can. So sorry, <laughs> I'll see what I can do. All right, so um, basically when I use, um, when I, I show my students Emacs and I teach computer science, um, so usually they're using Emacs for programming assignments. Um, I love that they're using it, but it, it, it causes me physical pain sometimes to watch them use it. So a typical thing a student will be doing is they might be editing multiple files at once. So they might come over here and they'll run Emacs on let's say the init file, or this would probably be a program file, and we're going to work in our init file later on. So I'll do this, make it a little bit bigger, um, make it a little smaller now, font bigger. Um, and then if they say, oh, I want to edit another file, what they'll do is they'll take the mouse, come over here, they'll open up another window, or they may have another window, and they actually edit it in another window. So they'll come here, they'll do some editing, do whatever they have to do, and when they're done, they'll exit, and they just keep loading and saving and loading and saving um, their editors. And this causes, um, this causes me physical pain. Even worse, they'll sometimes come over here and go to the file menu and quit or something like that. Um, so with Emacs, you want to use the keyboard as much as possible. I actually do leave my menus up here because when I'm using a new mode, it, it helps it helps remind me of what some of the things I can do. But you want to use the keyboard, and there's really no reason to exit Emacs once you start using it. Um, in fact, I don't even open Emacs usually from, um, from a terminal. I just have a hotkey to bring it up when I uh, log in or when I start my computer. And then I just keep using it forever. Um, and the reason we can do that is Emacs has this thing called buffers. And buffers are, uh, they're not files. A buffer is a place inside Emacs where you can do stuff. So typically you'd have a file or data or text associated with a buffer, but it's not exactly that. There's actually more to it than that. You can think of it kind of like tabs in a browser or tabs in another program. And they're just there and they, they basically work. So if I want to edit another file, I can open that file with control X, control F to visit file that we know. And let's load that readme file. And I did capital R and I hit tab to complete it. And now I'm in that readme file and you can see it's here. And I can actually switch back and forth between buffers with control X and then B. And then on the bottom it says go to another buffer. It's a little hard to see that, but it says init.l, which is the other one. And control X and then B and I can go back to this one back and forth. Um, I can also, let's say, go to another buffer, control X, B, and let's say new buffer. Let's call this buffer three, because it's our third buffer. Now we're in buffer three. If I do control X, B, it says uh, go back to readme.org, but I could go init.l um, and go back to there. It's, you, know, you have to kind of remember your buffers um, and know them, and I'll show you a better way to do that in a second. Um, but I can just now work in as many different files as I want. Um, or with an Emacs without ever, without ever having to do anything, uh, without ever having to leave. And in fact, when I'm done with this, if I go to let's, that README buffer again, when I'm done with it, I can try Control X and then K to kill buffer. It says kill the default README org, the one I'm in. And then it switches me back and now that buffer is no longer there. Um, so when I created buffer three, I created a new buffer with no file. So let's do that again. Let's call this lesson four notes.org. And let's just say uh, these are notes for lesson four. It's not a file on disk yet. It's just a buffer or not a file in my file system yet. It's just a buffer with an Emacs. I can do control X, control S to save it. It asks me for a file name and I'll say lesson for notes.org. Now it's actually saved. It 
reduce the font size uh, when it did that, but okay. Um, so that's the basic idea for buffers. Um, but there are a couple other things we can do as well. There's also Control X, Control B, and you'll see here it brings up a listing of buffers. So I can come to here and I can, you know, um, click on Enter, it brings me into three. Control X B, this will bring me to this one. Notice same. I have Windows here, and I'll do Windows in the next uh, the next video. Let's go back to one window for this. But that brings up a list of buffers. So I want to show you a couple of really cool and useful things to make buffers and also files a little bit easier to work with. So the first one is something called I do mode. So you notice when we had to switch buffers with Control X B, it said switch to buffer. There's not a whole lot of information down there. If I type question mark, it brings up um, some more information, but it's not that helpful. Let's type Control G to get out of this. If I try Control X F to uh, find a file, it also doesn't bring up any helpful information. I do mode, um, it stands for interactively doing things. It's built into Emacs, it comes with Emacs, it's really cool. It does a lot of completions for you. And I'm going to link to a really nice article that Mickey Peterson wrote um, in the blog. So let's go to that init file. And I'll just go onto the bottom of it for here. And we'll type in set I do enable flex matching T. Flex matching is um, it's a more flexible pattern matching. Uh, so you can type not exactly what you want, but still get what you want. And T for true, set that to be true. Let's set I do everywhere to be true. So we want this everywhere. And let's set I do mode to be one. So we'll save this, and I'm just going to go to the back of each line, Control X, Control E, Control X, Control E, Control X, Control E. And now it's running. Control X, Control E, remember from the last um, video, is execute the E list. Now, notice on the bottom, it says, these are my buffers. Notice I have less than four notes. I've got three. I've got buffer list, which is a buffer. It's a buffer which has all of the list of buffers in it. Scratch, which is the temporary buffer you get. Messages, which are... Those are those are the stars Emacs is creating for us. And notice init.l on the end. So let's just type, um, let's go to lesson four. So I hit L and notice that it gets rid of the ones without an L in it. I type E. Now we're only down to lesson four notes and completions, the LE. I'll just hit, uh, let's just you know, do a little more of that. That's the only one we have. We don't have to finish it. We hit enter. We're good to go. And this I do mode um, permeates, since I have I do everywhere, it permeates all of Emacs um, and just makes life a lot easier uh, in terms of completions. It's not the only way of doing fancy completions and helping find your way around. Another really popular one is called Helm, which I'll talk about later on. Um, I personally don't use Helm. Um, I'm going to play with I do a little bit more. I used to use both Helm and I do, but now I'm using something else called Council. Um, and I'll show you that and then you can make your own decision. So for today, I want to show you one last thing with, um, with buffers, which is when I type that Control X, Control B, it brought up this other window, and it there's a better mode for that. I'm just going to go back to my init.l buffer, and I'm going to do what's known as a def alias, and I'm going to do a def alias um, for the list buffers commands, and I'm going to alias list buffer that <laughs> the list buffer commands to i buffer. Um, which I like a little bit better. So control X, control E. And now if I do control X, control B, it just brings up a little bit of a nicer buffer list. If I want to get rid of buffers, I can mark them. Uh, do I want to kill the buffer? I just type control D on that. Let's uh, just type D. Just hit a couple of Ds. And then if I hit X to execute, do I want to really kill the buffers? Yes, I do. So it kind of lets me edit a bunch of buffers at once. If I want to go to a certain buffer, I can just you know, hit enter over it. It's a nice little interface. And some people like doing, um, I'm actually going to cut and paste this and put a comment here. And some people like iBuffer Other Window. And what iBuffer Other Window does, if I type escape x iBuffer Other Window to run that command interactively, it gives me a different window with the iBuffer. Type Q to get out of that. Kind of a nice feature. So that's a little bit about buffers. I'm going to show you one other thing that I don't like using. So let me save the init file. Let's go to, let's just go to the scratch buffer. Um, some of you might like tabs like your web browser has or other packages have. Um, I don't particularly like them, but if you do, there's a nice package called, um, called 
tab bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to try the package. And I'll do tab completion there. So tab bar, hit enter, it'll install it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do tab bar mode one. We'll execute that. Oops, hit the right key. And it's small, but you'll see up at the top we have our buffers now. So if we go to a buffer called three, create that buffer, four, um, and we've got these buffers that we can you know click between, just kind of like other. Uh, programs that you might be more used to and then there's some packages to make it look nicer. Um, if you wanted to put this into your init file, we could do that. I'm going to actually, well, so we could do a use package tab bar, um, ensure true. I'm not actually going to do this for real. And the config is going to be tab bar mode one. And I'm going to actually comment this out. And so if you like a tab bar. Um, so that's it for this time. I'm going to save all of this. Um, hope you got some stuff out of this. Hope you enjoyed it. Next time we're going to talk a little bit about Windows. Um, buffers and Windows go hand in hand. Then we'll talk a little about frames and uh, then navigation. So uh, again, hope you're enjoying it. Please uh, comment. Uh, please uh, tell me if you want to see anything in particular. Um, and that's it. So thanks a so bunch.